the, 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 the importance of technology. One of the things that we talked about was the preventive environmental management and uh, now we uh, are, are basically uh, talking about the greenhouse gas emissions. And I had started telling you that there are many greenhouse gases, N2O being one of them because it is far more, 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide and probably slowly you will learn slightly more on uh, the greenhouse uh, gases and the chemistry of them in the atmosphere and how secondary, tertiary and quaternary pollutants react with each other and then they create ozone hole and then they create so many other terrible things which will lead to uh, many as various manifestations, global warming being one of them. There are many other manifestations of it. So one of the reasons people are trying to solve uh, the problem of uh, N2O emissions is because it is coming from uh, seemingly such places where it is very difficult to avoid. For example, agricultural activity is contributing to 61% of uh, N2O emissions or domestic wastewater is contributing to 7%. When you treat domestic wastewater, N2O gets formed in the, in the process. Or energy generation, for example, is contributing 24% or many industrial activities contribute 8%. But fertilizer manufacturing in agriculture is the major contributor and you cannot do without, you cannot do without it. So it is kind of inevitable for us to, to, to live with N2O. So there are many ingenious ways people are, uh, people are doing um, and, and, and uh, there, are many, there are many missions internationally focusing N2O. You know that you know thermal power stations emit sulfur dioxide carbon dioxide, very rarely carbon monoxide, but the vehicles will emit some up to some extent carbon monoxide, but chulas will uh, emit far more quantity of carbon monoxide because of burning technology or lack of control on burning rate, you know. So the different type of pollution comes out because of different ways of uh, using fuel. So the thing is that uh, it is important that uh, uh, we understand what matters most and uh, when that uh, study was done by UNFCC, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, um, when they studied, uh, studied what are the most important molecules and then they came to conclusion that N2O being one of the unseen, not noticed, not known, less famous is actually very infamous, should be actually very infamous, that is what they realized. And lot of uh, nitrogen for net zero, uh, that is what uh, you know, uh, program uh, they are driving in Asia. Huge amount of agriculture takes place all over the world and uh, therefore the, the N2O comes out. Uh, some other place I will say little bit more about N2O. We only diagnose the problem here, a solution we will talk uh, soon. So challenge number three is obviously air pollution, how to minimize emissions of air pollutants. See the emission word is neutral word, it talks about emission of hazardous waste, solid waste, biomedical waste, kachra, garbage, wastewater, partially treated wastewater, air emissions, air pollutants, emission is a very broad term. So we are say, saying here that air emissions basically how to minimize them. Why we are talking them as a line item, does it mean that emission of wastewater is not dangerous? Of course it is dangerous. We talked about it now. Treatment of wastewater also is giving out N2. 7% of the world budget is, or uh, N2O budget is with respect to the, the, the wastewater treatment. So in fact, you try to do something good and something bad is happening. So the message, important message for all of us as students to appreciate is that if when we try to do something good, even out of that also some bad impacts are there. So uh, that is where uh, continuous research is required that uh, all these uh, PhD students or uh, master students are continuously looking for alternatives where can you do it in a better way, is there a cleaner way of treating, is there a cleaner way of manufacturing so that less pollution will come out. So you try to be cleaner everywhere including treatment, the treatment will create clean air or clean water but even that methodology has to be cleaner with less chemicals, less power and things like that. 
because generating power will have its own impact on global climate change. So there will be a secondary, tertiary, quaternary, those kind of layer, layers are there of, 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 of impact. So air pollution is a kind of unseen, it's like a booth, ghost, you don't know in middle of night something will happen, you have no idea where it will come from, you have no idea how to catch it, there is no way you can go back to people who actually created that crime. So it's very difficult and then without saying anything it will go to the transboundary, it will go to the next country, it will go to the next state. The United States was creating so much of air pollution and acid rain was being created in Canada. Northeast United States had thermal power stations using coal and then you know uh, American coal is more sulfur dioxide, I mean sulfur containing coal and they, their technologies were high temperature technologies which will also create more uh, NOx. So huge amount of SOx in the fuel, fuel and NOx because of burning technology. SOx and NOx mixture will create acid rain, sulfur dioxide, uh, H2SO4 and, 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 and uh, uh, HNO3 and those acids will rain on Canada forest and Canada is becoming bald, all the forests are going away. And they kept on crying, foul, foul and they said, where, 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 we are not doing. Fifteen years it happened. Finally, when, when, when international pressure came, they had to accept. Acid rain story is a very bad story with respect, with respect to United States. So, you, 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 it becomes a political emergency and elections were fought, or presidential elections were fought with the promise that we will stop uh, impact on our neighbor. So, this is air pollution is a very international emergency. Just like global climate change became an emergency because it is international issue. So, what happens is that uh, uh, there are two reasons. One is uh, the, the, the nature and quality of pollution, the, the, the characteristics of pollution. Second thing is the uh, way in which they are emitted. And most of the burning technologies and because they are patching, patchy network and it is happening all over, somewhere vehicles are taking out, somewhere thermal power stations are taking out, somewhere a power requirement is more in the evening, in the summer, during work hours in industry, near festival, industries work harder, more pollution comes out. So because this is patchy and you know all distributed, uh, nature of emission, uh, there is a too much of ding dong in, in, in terms of how much pollution and where and how it comes out. So it's a very highly uh, random process. Students of Professor Karmakar, therefore they have to learn stochastics, they have to learn very complicated statistics because it is not one number, it is a you know a conglomerate of several numbers that are randomly moving and then how do we really make sense out of them? So the picture is very nebulous and picture is very complex. That is one of the reasons why air pollution pakad mein aana difficult hai. The second uh, uh, problem is that the air pollution devices will have a particular type of pollution wave go going in and when it, when it is treated, it is not uh, the straight line. It is also having some kind of waveform. Those two waveforms do not match. So, first of all, what is the waveform? Uh, the waveform that, that is entering into the system is random enough. The same form is not matched by the system. So, a completely different waveform is, is generated at the outlet of the uh, treatment system. So, it becomes even more complicated if you want to track the outlet. Otherwise, the common sense says, if I know inlet, I will know my outlet. Generally, that is what you will think, right? So, if I do this, I will, something will happen. Human beings always think in a very straightforward uh, cause-effect relationship. You understand what I am saying? Ye karunga to ye hoga, A to B hoga, C to D hoga. You always have a simplistic approach. Air pollution pocket me diyata because it is very complicated. It is really truly random. Now, when Sankalpa was working with one industry, we discovered that even water quality, wastewater quality coming to a treatment plant is highly random. And without wanting, he had to, he was forced to get into statistics because 130 industries in one case, 12 industries in other case, were bringing wastewater to a single treatment plant, common effluent treatment plant. And then, you know, there was so much of waveform and everybody was unloading when he or she wanted according to their shift, according to what dye is they are putting 
according to what chemical they are putting. So it becomes you know everybody's business. Everybody was doing whatever they wanted, and the receiving end end he was analyzing. You measure every two minutes also if you measure the the, the quality is different. So this becomes a, a very big issue. So very long analysis uh, was done of their data. Fortunately, they were very good people, very responsible industry. They themselves had a three year of data. Although the data quality was not very high in our opinion, frequency was not, but at least they could give us a daily data. So we assume that suppose that is a daily average, then it is it dangerous. So therefore, what will happen every hour, and then you know what is the average of that? Is it matching with the number that they are giving? So you know it became like totally statistical question rather than environmental question. But uh, obviously we are trained in those kind of things, so we were trying to do that. And then mathematically, we were writing mathematical model of each equipment there. So now, if you are all the equations are straightforward, y is equal to m x, isn't it? Y is equal to alpha x to the power beta. You are writing very simple equations. Now, when you are having complete randomness, how the randomness is transform uh, is, is transferred to the parameters alpha and beta? You understand? Well, y changes, x changes. You will realize the the transferring of uh, you know inaccuracies and variation. They also will impact on the pa parameters of the equation, right? So then another mathematics has to be applied to it. How do you really do that? So it becomes really a hair pull, hair pulling exercise for us. But we had to do that to be able to make sense out of it. So then not only we were giving the 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 rate constants or the system parameters, but we are giving the error margins on them. Based on the data that is going inside, so it became a very complicated exercise. But uh, Sankalp is brilliant; he did a good job, and we could give a, a kind of sensible answer. And he spent five pages to tell how it is not accurate what he has done, but he did accurate enough which was required for designing. And then obviously we give a safer design, so slightly acha design we give, so that uh, real plant will not fail. That was this was a design exercise. But what to design for was a basic question. And that is where the randomness and the stochastic behavior was 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 had to be considered. Anyway, so air pollution control devices uh, are very complex, and uh, the waveform of the inlet does not match with the waveform for at, at outlet. So even treated air will have a variation. Now, other thing is that the standard that are set may not be rational, and standard is one number. Standard doesn't give a waveform. You understand? So you say this much. Oh, you are below that. Fine, you are doing very good. But the real impact, health impact. Suppose Fuleria sir wants to know what is the impact on pregnant woman in the family who is cooking all the time in the in the hut, or what is happening to a, a old man who is asthmatic or tuberculosis he has. If she has to ask that question, what is happening to the pregnant woman and the baby? Why well, it is a very complicated question for him because he is looking at the waveforms, even treatment or without treatment. And he really doesn't know what to look for, how to really predict, whatever he predicts, is it good enough? How to base policies on it? He has to also go forward. It is polluted. Everybody knows it is polluted. But what to do is a basic question people are asking him. So it's very complicated, and you should really appreciate how how people try to use why they use very complicated, sophisticated method to to analyze. And there is a lot of uh, complicated chemistry uh, that goes along. We, if you want to really treat uh, the the treatment, if you want to really treat the N2O emissions, so therefore, once it comes out, it is impossible to treat because it goes in atmosphere, becomes ultra trace. As such, it is low quantity, but because it's 300 times more potent as a greenhouse gas, its impact is more major. So now, with such a such a slow poison, when it goes out, you really are in trouble. So the best strategy would be to actually do a control inside the manufacturing process itself. So, for example, suppose you are now Sankalp work with a fertilizer com company. So, when they are producing the nitric acid, which is one of the raw materials for them, they use nitric acid to extract phosphorus chemicals, and also nitrogen and phosphorus are the contents of fertilizer. So they need acid for various actions, essential raw material. So in, while making HNO3, 
the NOx comes out and one of the important components in NOx is N2O. So, uh, that N2O is the target for us. So, how do you really, because remaining NOx goes into HNO3, you understand. So, that NOx that was created, actually it is NOx making plant and then it is, it is con converting into HNO3 by sc uh, scrubbing that gas into water. But what does not get scrubbed is the N2O, that remains a, a, a pollutant, right. So, they have a mixture of uh, NO2 plus N2 plus O2 and all that which is coming uh, to the plant and then they do scrubbing and then finally, uh, they produce HNO3 and uh, what to do with the nitrogen is the issue for them. So, either they do in a recycling fashion or they insert a secondary control measure uh, or uh, they will insert a tertiary uh, control measure uh, for, for NOx and these are all uh, the strategies for abatement of. Now, it looks uh, uh, very simple probably, but uh, if you really see it, you it needs huge amount of energy, there is a compressor and uh, the, the catalysts are extremely expensive and hundreds of crores rupees of investment is required to be able to do that. So, therefore, there is a mission in India where uh, we are trying to identify which industries are likely to do more and a 50 percent collateral will come from government and a 50 percent collateral will be put by the industry and to put industrial collateral there will be their own industry will be used as a, as a guarantee and then banks will give them the credit line and based on that credit line it will be uh, it will be done. And those who do proper work government even will help them later on more because they have fulfilled the promise because it is in the larger in national interest because India in under um, Paris Convention, India has agreed to control N2 and India is one of the countries which is taking it very seriously about which we should be very happy. So, sometimes you know what we read in newspaper or what we see are simpler things, but more complicated things are going behind the scene and government keeps on doing this kind of things. This is one of the example N2 control uh, is, is one of the one of the issues and there are two, three ways. You, if a plant is new, then you can do it upfront. But if plant is old, then you have to do retrofitting and that is more expensive actually. For new plant, it is cheaper. For example, the same company now, Deepak Fertilizer is putting a new plant, it is very easy, no problem for us. But uh, even that work also we are going to do now, we are going to analyze the new plant when it comes. But uh, the old uh, plant to do it is very difficult because you have to break open so many things in between. Then pressure, you know, your pressure devices, creating devices are not adequate. So, you have to change all pressure creating devices. So, where you know 20 crore rupees was enough to put a compressor, now you need 3 compressors or 20 crore. So, a 20 crore rupee job becomes 60 crore rupee job because now pressure creating devices need to be more, more active or higher specification. So, difference delta P, difference of pressure at the inlet and outlet because you are putting one more pack column, two more pack column, very huge 10 story building type. So, it is very complicated you know. So, it looks very simple on a sketch when I draw as a teacher, but when they do it in reality, stainless steel column, crores of rupees filling in it, you know, it is very, very expensive, all stainless steel, you are handling hot acid, so corrosion, so explosion, all those possibilities, runaway reaction, hot spots, melting of stainless steel, what can I tell you? Very, very complicated things can happen. So, it is a very big, very risky business. So, we have to manage that technology properly. But India has very good chemical engineers and we are very good people scientifically, so we are able to manage it.